essence of all spirituality is about finding balance, balance and integration. And there's a very beautiful little story in the Gospel of Luke that uh, speaks to us in a Christian way about this balance and integration in our spiritual life and our ordinary life. It's the story of Martha and Mary. And Jesus, you remember, is on his way to Jerusalem and he stops at the house of these two friends, Martha and Mary, who are also sisters and the sisters of Lazarus, his other friend. And we're told that Martha, when she sees him, comes out of the house to greet him. And Mary, her sister, sits at his feet and stays there listening to his words. So immediately you see a, a kind of a difference in personality. Martha is the proactive person and Mary is the quieter, uh, more introverted type perhaps. Martha is the one who makes sure, makes sure that there are enough chairs in the room and uh, enough uh, uh, registrations made and uh, Mary is the person who's not part of the organization but, but she's present. And then we're told that Martha becomes distracted by her many tasks. That's all we're told. Now, women are supposed to be very good at multitasking. Uh, men are supposed to be, get a little obsessive about one thing, but women can do a hundred different things. Well, on this occasion, uh, Martha didn't. She was overwhelmed. And she comes into the room where Jesus is speaking. She interrupts him, and she says, Lord, don't you see I'm doing all this work by myself? Tell my sister to give me a hand. I think this is the only time, actually, where any disciple tells Jesus what to do. And she's manifesting all the classic symptoms of stress. I think we all know what that feels like. The time where you feel that you're left alone, you're holding the baby and everything else, and nobody's there to help you, and you feel sad, you feel alone, and you feel angry, and you displace your anger upon the first innocent victim you meet. So we can sympathize with Martha, and I think we're meant to. But how does Jesus uh, deal with this outburst and this, this suffering person? Stress is a real cause of suffering. First of all, he's a friend, and so he says to her, Martha, Martha. He's calling her back to herself. That's what happens when we get stressed out. We, we lose touch with our self. And then he says, you are fussing and fretting about so many things. You got completely fragmented, but only one thing is necessary. And then he defends M M Mary, because Martha has been attacking her sister. So he says, Mary has chosen the better part, and it will not be taken away from her. And that's where the story ends. I remember I told the story once at a Buddhist Christian conference I was at, and a Buddhist friend of mine said, oh, Lawrence, that's a great, uh, great story. What happened next? Well, like lots of uh, stories in the Gospel, we don't know what happens to the characters next, but we are what happens next. It's how we interpret the story and make, it, uh, make sense of it in, in our own lives. I think what happens next is that we have to understand what Martha and Mary symbolize and what is the one thing necessary that Jesus is talking about. So Martha traditionally represents the active life, Mary, the interior life, the contemplative life. And this reflects perhaps the two hemispheres of the brain that we know today work uh, co in a complementary way, quite different way. The left-hand brain uh, works like Martha, uh, active, analytical, organizational, rational, logical, and the right-hand brain works more intuitively, more silently, um, more contemplatively. So the one thing necessary I would think, means that Martha and Mary have to live together in the same house peacefully, in, friend, in friendship. We ourselves have to integrate these two dimensions of ourselves, because Martha and Mary are like the two halves of the human soul. And the great question is, how do we do that? Well, during the uh, festival, uh, I've been giving a number of talks about meditation, Christian meditation, meditation in the as a, as a way of Christian prayer, or the prayer of the heart. And for many people, me included, uh, finding meditation in the Christian tradition uh, became a way of, of doing precisely that, of integrating these two halves of, of our soul. And to meditate is very simple. It uh, involves being still, 
being silent, being simple. And the tradition that we follow is to take a, a single word, a prayer word, sacred word, and repeat this word silently, continuously in your mind and heart during the period that you set aside for meditation. We'd recommend people to meditate every day, morning and evening. That may take you 20 years uh, to get into that rhythm of meditation. It might take you uh, two weeks. It just depends. Many people are uh, attracted by meditation today. Many people are introduced to it from a secular uh, point of view. As a Meditation is good for stress. It's good for relaxation. It's, uh, uh, the only thing it's not good for, for is uh, restoring your hair. I've been meditating for 30 years and it hasn't done that yet. But otherwise, all the benefits of meditation are, are really quite um, well researched. But we teach it as a way of, of prayer, as a spiritual path, a spiritual practice that you can integrate into your daily life. Uh, it doesn't replace other forms of prayer at all. Uh, of course, it, I think, enriches and enhances your reading of scripture, your worship, and the other aspects of your life. But you see the fruits of meditation in your life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kind, uh, kindness, goodness, fidelity, gentleness, self-control, what St. Paul calls the fruits of the Spirit. So maybe if we have one minute left, we could just take uh, uh, a moment to go into a very short period of meditation. We meditate with children uh, in many places now and teaching meditation in schools. And it's beautiful to meditate with children because you realize just how simple and natural it is. So we sit down, we sit still. The basic rule of posture is simply to sit with your back straight. You can put your hands on your lap or on your knees and then close your eyes lightly and relax your shoulders, relax the muscles of your face. Close your eyes lightly and then silently in your heart begin to say your word. The word I would recommend is the word Maranatha. This is a beautiful Christian prayer word. It's in the language that Jesus spoke, Aramaic. It means, come Lord. St. Paul ends the first letter to the Corinthians with it. It's a very ancient and beautiful Christian prayer. And if you choose that word, say it uh, as four syllables, ma ra na tha. Listen to the word as you say it. Give it your full attention. And when the mind wanders, and it's quite natural, of course, our mind is like Martha. It will be distracted by many things. But don't be discouraged or disappointed by the distractions. Just come back to the word. That's the art of this prayer of the heart. Just keep returning gently faithfully uh, to the word. I'd recommend that if you want to learn to meditate, it's very helpful to meditate every day. You could integrate it into your other ways of prayer in the morning and in the evening. And meditate with other people once a week. Uh, meditation groups are all over the country. Uh, that's a very helpful um, support as well. And we have a website, wccm.org which is uh, the website of a community that has grown up out of this uh, tradition of prayer. One of the important things, perhaps, for the modern church is for us is to realize that meditation creates community and allows the presence of Christ to manifest in some new ways. Thank you. <laughs>